Hey, Fujifilm photographers. I've fielded a lot of questions over the years about how the Fujifilm dynamic range setting works with auto ISO. The dynamic range and ISO settings are linked, so what happens if ISO is in auto? Grab your camera and follow along as we go through some scenarios here and see how this works. But first, we'll address both dynamic range and auto ISO on their own. And you can learn all about how to use the dynamic range setting, auto ISO, and all of your other Fujifilm camera settings in our Fujifilm camera tutorial courses found at photocourses.link slash cameras. And you can get 20% off all of those courses using the code tube20. That dynamic range setting helps you retain some highlight detail in high contrast scenes. And this allows you to increase your exposure slightly so that your shadow areas aren't too dark, but your bright areas won't be too bright. And that's a totally simplified explanation of it. And I can't believe I haven't done a video on dynamic range yet, uh, but you can read an article that I wrote and that'll be linked here if you want to have a more in-depth explanation of how dynamic range works. And this is important because you do need a specific minimum ISO in order to use the dynamic range settings. And these are all based on the camera's native base ISO. Check out this table here, which shows our minimum required ISOs for the different dynamic range settings. And these again are based on your camera's native base ISO. The new GFX cameras with a base ISO of 100 you need a minimum ISO of 200 to use DR200 and DR Auto, and a minimum ISO of 400 for DR400. The latest X series cameras like the X-T5 and X-H2, you need a minimum ISO of 250 for DR200 and DR Auto, and 500 for DR400, and so on. You're really just doubling your base ISO for DR200 and DR Auto, and double it again for DR400. And these are, it's important to know, based on the native ISO, not extended ISO. I did do a video about that, and you can check that out here. And now on to auto ISO. This allows you to specify an ISO range that the camera can operate in, and it can really simplify your task load in nearly all exposure modes. You just tell the camera, Pick whatever ISO you need as long as you stay between 160 and 6400, for example. That is, again, a really simplified explanation of auto ISO, and you can watch another older video about that if you want to learn more. It's also important to know what your display is going to look like when using dynamic range and auto ISO. When you're in an auto ISO program, the camera always shows you the maximum ISO in the display. So if you're in your Auto 1 program with a maximum ISO of 6,400, you'll always see A1 6,400 in the display. And then once you press the shutter halfway or the AEL button, then you'll see the camera's selected calculated ISO value there. Also, if you're in dynamic range auto, the camera will now choose which DR setting it's selecting or calculating, either 100 or 200, along with any other auto exposure variables. Now that we've had a little introduction to both dynamic range and auto ISO, just to catch up a little, how do they work together? Will the camera prioritize the dynamic range setting or the auto ISO setting? For example, if you set a minimum ISO of 125, will the camera then raise that to 250 if you have DR200 set? What about DR Auto? Or will the camera stay at a minimum ISO of 125 and then dynamic range will be off? The short answer is that as long as your auto ISO program has a high enough maximum ISO, your camera is gonna prioritize your dynamic range setting over your set minimum ISO. So if your auto ISO program has a default minimum ISO of 125 and you set DR200, your new minimum ISO will go up to 250. If you then set DR100 or off, then your minimum ISO is gonna drop back down to 125. 
Let's look at some other scenarios, assuming a camera base native ISO of 125. Your auto ISO program is set to 125 to 6400 with DR400 set. The camera will maintain that DR400 setting and raise your minimum ISO to 500 and go up to the maximum if needed. If you set your auto ISO program between 125 and 400, DR400 is going to be unavailable in the menus because that needs a minimum ISO of 500. Only DR100, 200, and auto are going to be available, and those will still work as described. Dynamic range priority, that other setting, works in the same manner as dynamic range when it comes to requiring a minimum ISO, and that's because dynamic range is a part of the dynamic range priority setting. DRP weak correlates to DR200, and DRP strong correlates to DR400. DRP auto, unlike DR auto, will choose between all of the dynamic range priority options and thus requires the DR400 minimum ISO to choose dynamic range priority strong. So that's the quick and easy explanation of how dynamic range works with auto ISO in Fujifilm cameras. You can learn more about your specific camera in our Fujifilm camera courses linked in the description here. And again, you can get 20% off with the code TUBE20. Please let me know if you have any questions or anything to add, and we'll see you in the next video.